what is up everybody we are back here at king films for another nfl video uh this one week 15 betting locks and game predictions uh but before the recap of week 14 i just have to appreciate all of the support that we got on our most recent video uh about the playoff predictions heading into week 15 it drew over 2000 views and over 50 comments uh in the comments section the engagement was great uh, a few debates uh, in the comments is what we like to see gets the engagement on the videos up the one thing that I do have to say though is that YouTube let me know that only about 1% of the people who viewed the video had subscribed so please be sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video and here we go recap of week 14 and a pretty bad uh, game prediction week now we did have some close results don't not go our way and then a pretty big upset in the Saints uh, losing to the Eagles. Uh, no one really predicted that one, but a few toss-up games that we just didn't get right. So eight and six there, not our best week, but it is still above 500. And then the betting locks, which is where we are very hot right now, uh, went five and zero in week 13, week 14, two and one. And not gonna lie, this first best bet was terrible. We had Texans at minus one, really just a pick 'em line against the Bears. And you can see it was doomed from the start. David Montgomery, 80-yard touchdown. I mean, who really could have predicted that Mitch Trubisky could have outplayed uh, Deshaun Watson? But, I mean, Deshaun Watson's best target was Kiki Kuti. So, maybe not the biggest surprise. I mean, the Texans' defense just got shredded. Uh, and the Bears' defense actually played to their potential. So, I think the Texans lost by about 30 points here. This was a very ugly first best bet. But we were able to flip the week around to a winning week. Next best bet we had was Colts minus two and a half. And they just pushed the Raiders around in this one. Phillip Rivers played a great game for the Colts. Jonathan Taylor had a breakout game uh, in the rushing department. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is on a hot streak recently. And then the Colts defense played pretty well. They did get a pick six late in the game to secure the cover. So we get to one and one there. And then a wild Monday night football game. It didn't look good when it was fourth down in the fourth quarter, but Lamar comes back after his cramp or his poop, we don't really know, uh, and delivers a dime to Marquise Brown, and they get the touchdown and eventually end up winning the game by five. So we get that best bet to go our way. So now on the season, as I mentioned, two and one last week, more importantly, seven and one, hitting the hot streak in the betting locks. For once in the season, we are above 500 on the betting locks. Got to keep the positive momentum going. Game predictions, uh, 8-6, and six, and then 139, 64, and 1 overall on the game predictions. So now getting into Week 15's game predictions. And first, we have a pretty good AFC West battle for the Thursday night football game where I'm going to be taking the Raiders to beat the Chiefs. Uh, Derek Carr has not played well the last three weeks. And more importantly, the defense, which hadn't been playing well the entire year, got shredded alive by all those three teams. But I think they have a pretty good matchup against Justin Herbert and the Chargers. I mean, they're really one-dimensional. Uh, you saw how Bill Belichick did it. Just took out Justin Herbert, rushed everyone. And the Raiders actually do have a good D-line. I think they'll be able to keep Herbert in check, but... Really, the reason I think the Raiders are going to win this game is because their offense is capable of winning a shootout. I mean, when these two teams played last time, it was 31-26. So, give me the Raiders to win this one. It's always going to be close uh, with the Raiders, but I have them winning in a shootout. Next game, we have the Bills at the Broncos on Saturday. And give me the Bills to win this one. I think they are the hot, one of the hottest teams in football uh, at this point. And the Broncos, I mean, if Drew Locke plays well, they can hang with anyone. Uh, but when he doesn't, they really are a below-average football team. Uh, I wouldn't say their defense is anything special. They gave up about 27 points to Teddy Bridgewater and the Panthers. Uh, that number could be about 30-35 with Josh Allen. And I just don't think that uh, Drew Locke can be able to move the ball to put up 30 points in this Bills defense. So give me the Bills to win that one. Next game, we have the Packers hosting the Panthers, and Panthers likely not to have McCaffrey in this one. Regardless, I'm going with the Packers to win the game. Uh, Aaron Rodgers continuing his MVP campaign. All of the targets 
and really the defense is coming into its own uh, late in the season. It's proven. It's a proven model for the Packers. When they can get up on you and they can just let their pass rushers tee off on the quarterback, that's how they win the game. And that's how I think they're going to win this one. Going to get an early lead. Aaron Rodgers is going to go off in the first half. Then the pace of play is going to slow down the second half. Panthers with Teddy Bridgewater will not be able to come back. Now we get into Sunday's action. And I'm going to be taking the 49ers over the Cowboys. I mean, not looking bright for either team, but I'm just going to be taking the superior team in the 49ers. Uh, Nick Mullins' crucial mistakes uh, really cost them against the football team. Their defense really had a bounce back week after getting shredded alive by Josh Allen and the Bills. Uh, They played well against Alex Smith and Dwayne Haskins. It was really just Nick Mullins and the Niners had two costly turnovers, which were returned for touchdowns. So I think they'll turn that around. I mean, I think Nick Mullins will have a bounce back game against the Cowboys defense that is notorious for being one of the worst in the league. Um, Andy Dalton and the Cowboys offense isn't anything special. I mean, they've looked good against the Bengals, but that's the Bengals. So give me the superior team in the 49ers. Next game, we have the Seahawks at the football team. And some people seem to think that there's some upset potential for the football team in this one. I am not seeing that. Give me the Seahawks to win this one. I mean, I don't think they're going to let another one slip to an NFC East opponent. They obviously got embarrassed by the Giants a couple weeks ago. And the football team are really built like the Giants. I mean, the Seahawks could have easily won that game. It was just O-line struggles. I think they'll lock it in. You can get Russell Wilson to turn the ball over, but... I think they'll be really prepared going into this one. Uh, How you beat the football team, uh, you're going to have to be able to establish the run, but then Russell Wilson is going to have to pick apart the secondary, which I think he can. And then the football team offense was really lethargic last week against the 49ers. Uh, Seahawks don't have a great defense, but if it's Dwayne Haskins, I mean, expect a really low-scoring game out of the football team. If it's Alex Smith, I don't think it's that much different. Um, he's not playing much better at this point. Give me the Seahawks handily in that one. Next game, an NFC North elimination battle. It's safe to say the loser of this one is out of playoff contention. And give me the Vikings to win this one over the Bears. I know everyone wants to pick the Bears after a great win against the Texans. But let me just remind you that the Vikings really just played with the Bucks. Uh, and that last Sunday's game, I mean, Dan Bailey really cost them 10 points. It could have made uh, it a one-possession game. I think that was all the difference. Uh, Tom Brady was not hitting on his deep balls. I mean, the Vikings did not look impressive by any means, but they did handily defeat the Char- the Bears on Monday Night Football earlier this year. Uh, really what was the defining factor for the Bears in that game was that they got a quarter Patterson a 100-yard kick return touchdown. Without that, they would have been completely out of that game. Uh, And I don't know, maybe they've found their ground game with David Montgomery, but I'm just not buying it. It was against the terrible Texans. The Minnesota front seven is something different. So give me the Minnesota Vikings in that one. Next game, we have a very intriguing matchup between Belichick and his disciple, Brian Flores and give me the Dolphins to win this one I mean I think the Patriots are out of it at this point uh and they tend to lose in Miami I mean that was just a disappointing performance on Thursday Night Football last week the offense cannot do anything uh and if anything Miami has a better defense than the LA Rams so give me the Dolphins big here against the Patriots who I think are demoralized Next game is pretty easy. Give me the Ravens over the Jags. The Ravens are coming to their own, looking the best that we've ever seen them in the 2020 season. And the Jags just have one win. Now they're going to start Gardner Minshew, who is their best quarterback. I don't even know why they had Mike Glennon starting. He was clearly not as good as Gardner Minshew. And I think the Jags could put up some points on a Ravens defense that looked pretty bad against the Browns. Uh, Ravens are on a short week this week, but... Ravens are the superior team. Give me Baltimore in that one. Next game, NFC South matchup. Give me the Bucks pretty handily here. I mean, the Falcons just blew the game against the Chargers. You can't pick them to win a game. This could be close. Uh, Falcons can turn the ball over uh, when they're on defense, but that's really the only thing they can do. If 
Tom Brady has a sound game, doesn't really turn the ball over. They own time of possession, run the ball with Ronald Jones, get some play action going. There's nothing this Falcons defense can do. And Matt Ryan uh, in the passing game weren't really successful against the Chargers. I don't know how you're going to do against the Bucks defense, so give me Tampa Bay there. Next game, we have the Titans hosting the Lions. And not sure if Stafford's going to play, but regardless, give me the Titans in this one. Uh, Derrick Henry had a great day against the terrible Jacksonville defense. I think he'll do the same thing to a pretty bad Lions defense. Tannehill will have his way. Give him the Titans big in that one. Next game, Colts hosting the Texans. AFC South matchup that came down to the wire last time. I don't think it's as close this time. I mean, you've seen the difference between these two teams uh, in their last week's matchup. Obviously, as I mentioned already, Texans got blown out. Colts blew out the Raiders. Give me the Colts big in this one. I think they'll be able to move the ball at will against the terrible Texans defense. And then Deshaun Watson, what is he going to be able to put together against a pretty stout Colts? The I don't know. So give me the Colts to win that one. Then a game that I think has serious upset potential is Jalen Hurts and the Eagles going to the Arizona Cardinals. And give me the Cardinals here close, but I think this could present a lot of challenges for the Cardinals defense going against Jalen Hurts. I mean, you saw what Taysom Hill did uh, the first couple weeks. Uh, He was starting for the Saints, and I think Jalen Hurts could really replicate that. I mean, the Eagles have some great weapons on their team. They also have a great ground game and O-line when they decide to use it. Miles Sanders over 100 yards rushing in that last one. So I think they'll be able to gouge the Arizona Cardinals defense, who is not particularly good. But give me Kyler Murray and the proven Arizona Cardinals to win this one. Even though they didn't look too impressive against New York Giants, uh, it was really that starting field position that propelled them to that victory. Next game, we have a very lopsided matchup give me the Rams huge in this one I mean this is the second leg of the Jets doubleheader out west they're playing just as good of a team as the Seahawks if not better and what will is there to compete when they're 0 13 I mean the offense is absolutely horrendous with Adam Gase only putting up three points kicker struggles Uh, Castillo missed three field goals last week their defense could not stop uh, Russell Wilson last week and I don't think they'll be able to stop the powerful running game and play action offense with Jared Goff so give me the Rams there big next game is the game of the week we have the Chiefs at the Saints and give me the Chiefs big here I mean I know this is their second game on the road trip they just had a dog fight really in the fourth quarter it came down to against the Dolphins but I think they'll get this done against a pretty good Saints squad. Uh, Saints really need Drew Brees at this point, it looks like. I mean, they really got down early 17-0 and couldn't get their way out of the hole and ended up losing by three points. Should have been a lot more than that. They were not able to corral Jalen Hurts. This is one of the great defenses, but it's Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are going to put up, what, 28-plus points. I'm not sure what Taysom Hill is going to be able to generate against this. Uh, I mean, let's say average Chiefs defense. It's not quite as good as it was last year in the playoffs, but uh, give me the Chiefs to win that one. Next game, Sunday night game, it's the Giants and Browns and Daniel Jones. I mean, everyone was hyping him up uh, going into the Cardinals game. Everyone thought that the Giants might win, but... It was an absolute disaster on the offensive end. You can really see what he is when he turns the ball over and is not as mobile as he usually is. Give me the Browns big here. I think their defense is a bounce-back game against a pretty bad Giants offense, and I think Baker keeps it going on Sunday Night Football. Last game of the week, it's Monday night, and the Steelers absolutely need the win. Bengals probably could do with a loss. Uh, would help their draft stock potential. So give me the Steelers big here. I think they bounced back. Uh, Big Ben has a great game. So now we get into the betting locks. I have four this week. Reminder again that we are 7-1, hot the last two weeks. And we get into the first one. Give me the Eagles plus 6.5 in this one. I already mentioned this is going to be a much closer game than people think. Um, Kyler Murray in the Cardinals offense 
they might be able to put up some points on this Eagles defense. I mean, Eagles are pretty injured. It seems like they're injured every single week, but um, McLeod is out, and I believe one of their D linemen is out. But they do have Alex Singleton at the linebacker position. I think he will do pretty well in stopping Kyler Murray. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins might have a pretty good game. But really, it's Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense that I think will be able to dominate time of possession. And the Eagles really need this game for their playoff hopes in the NFC East. So give me the Eagles to keep up their momentum and keep this close. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get the win, but give me them plus six and a half. Next game is probably the sketchiest of the four. I would advise you don't put as much money on this one, but give me the Rams minus 17. I know this is a really ugly spread. A lot of people probably would just mark it off the table because the spread is so high, but I really just believe that the Jets are so bad to this point. I mean, they have had their competitive moments um, in this season, but that's been against mediocre competition, and this Rams team with McVay, on an extended week, they played on last Thursday night, and they whooped up the Patriots 21 points. That would have covered this spread. I think the Rams win by even more and cover the 17-point spread. Next game is the no-brainer of the week. Everybody seems to have it at this point. It's the Chiefs minus three against the Saints. I mean, the Chiefs have only lost one game this season, and their games against uh, cream of the crop competition, they usually blow them out. Um, and I only have to take a field goal in this one. So give me the Chiefs to just win outright. And I think they cover the three points. Worst case scenario, if they win, it's only a three. It's a push. So give me the Chiefs there. I think that's a great bet. But, I mean, these popular picks have not done well the last couple weeks. So maybe the Saints do get the upset. Final best bet is the Steelers minus 12 on Monday Night Football. Uh, this is another uncomfortable spread, but the Bengals are so abysmal with Brandon Allen and Ryan Finley at the helm. I mean, they only put up seven points on the abysmal Cowboys defense. I know the Steelers defense isn't as good as it was a few weeks ago, but can you see the Bengals getting more than 14 points? When they had Joe Burrow in this game, I think it was week eight, maybe week nine against the Steelers, they put up... I think 10 points. Can they get more than that in this one? And then I think the Steelers offense goes off. Uh, I think they reassert the ground game and then Big Ben has a great day through the air. So those are my week 15 game predictions. Comment down below what you think I want to know. Uh, And then on the best bets side, do you agree with mine? Do you want to fade me? Do you have any other predictions? Comment that down below. And thank you for watching.